In episode two of our multi-hull centre yard walkabout, yard manager Matt Theobald and projects manager Brendan Seward are joined by Darren Newton, DASCAP designer and managing director. In the last episode, we took you down the pontoons. This time we head down into the yard, lingering over a stunning selection of boats packed with multi-hull history. So the next boat in our yard is Turn. Um, this is owned by an American um, who comes over here and does his sailing. Um, so she's here this year and then he's he's moving on going uh, further north next year when he goes sailing. So we've uh, we've had her out and we're going to do new coat of anti-foul. We've done a few bits inside, um, some painting up some floors, some um, paint on the front beam and things to give it a bit more UV protection. And there's a few little jobs that we've done to just tidy her up and make her a bit smarter for the, for the new owner. So TS5 we have encountered on the race courses. This one is, it's actually almost brand new, isn't it? It was ordered just before lockdown. Pretty much brand new. It's done a bit of um, use in France, um, just as a test boat, demo boat. And then the, the owner took, took hold of it. At the end of one of the lockdowns, mm. uh, took it, sailed it over here and did a little bit of sailing, but nowhere near as much as he wanted. You going to tell me about Prismo, Matt? Yes, this is Prismo, Dazgat 1495. Uh, was Apollo, but just changed hands. So new owner, new name. And she's going to semi-retire from the race course by the looks of it, do a, do a lot more cruising. We suspect a little bit of racing because that's just great fun and they enjoy it too. So it's a bit of a new boat, new learning curve, and it's good to see her back out and being used again. Are we um, fitting a few bits and pieces over the winter? He's doing a few, a few jobs for him. Um, he wants to increase his cruising range, so he's got a, a, another fridge that he's going in. Um, there's a few little pieces he wants to start up, make make look nice. And um, yeah, so so very minimal, um, just just some general maintenance, and then a few little additions. And I expect he'll do a bit more cruising next year, and want to add to the list of things he things he wants to add really. Okay. Hey, you've both got a bit of history here as well, haven't you? Both lots yes. of uh, history with bare necessities. Um, I've done two fast nets on her. Um, also gone up to Scotland and did the uh, Scottish Islands Peaks race um, with, with the owners and a couple of runners up there. So he didn't do the running, that's way out of my league. But it was a, it was a great race actually, really good. Um, different scene of, of racing that we don't get so much of down here. I know we have the smaller version with the, with the uh, three creeks that we, we all really enjoy, but that one's a lot more serious. Um, but yeah, I've done some pretty serious miles in this. Uh, so has Matt with doing a fast net in himself. Two fast nets on this one. But this boat's done thousands of miles racing and thousands of miles cruising. It's, it's a very, very well used boat, you see. And it has a bit of kind of deeper Dazcat history as well, doesn't it? It was also Drama Queen before their necessities, so it was our Simon Baker's boat. And obviously done an awful lot of stuff with Simon before, before the no, new owners even uh, even got near it. So she's done an awful lot of miles this boat. Very well proven. It was my first sail on a Dazcat, Daz, wasn't it? Going oh, down Lorient. to Lorient. <laughs> Hello, Daz. <laughs> Yeah, I think that was actually one of the nicest sails ever on that boat, doing 20 knots down the channel to four. Just two fingers on the helm, hull just cresting. It was very nice. Flat. Yeah, next boat is Morpheus. Built sort of in the, in the UK, some in the UK, some in the Philippines. Uh, again, done lots of racing for the last couple of years and starting to, starting to prove itself now. And uh, really good boat and we've both sailed it and it's just just a great fun boat that puts a big smile on your face every time you go out in it. It's nice to have it here at the yard as well. Shuttleworth 39? Yes. So next boat is another Dazcat 10 meter or 995R. Um, this one has had to, some a different life. So originally it started as an open bridge deck and uh, when the new owners bought it, it was uh, it had a, we put a roof on her and made her into a more conventional cruiser racer. Um, more than the out-out racer she was originally. Um, 
she's here for some modifications again doing uh, Round Britain next year. So we are actually adding a electric outboard in replace of one of the outboards that she's already got. So she's going a bit green, she's getting a new big lithium battery, a few little modifications and then she'll end up having her own electric drive alongside our petrol so she's still got a bit of use of both but the uh, drive will also regen so she can get power when she's Excellent. doing around Britain without having to carry extra generators yeah. and things like that so a really good addition for yeah. racing and cruising really. Okay and um, Dad's EV Tiger is kind of in, in our minds it's sustainable in another way as well isn't it because it's a boat share yeah. Partnership. Do you want to tell me a little bit about well, it's that? It's joint ownership. There's a few boats that have got joint ownership programs. You know, it helps share the cost. It helps uh, spread the work and the winter maintenance. And it's always good to have someone that comes along with you and sails, obviously. Um, so both owners are very keen, keen to cruise, keen to race. Um, so their first big adventure will be this around Britain. If, uh... Skipper's daughter. She's a Lagoon 42 TPI. There's not too many of these, but um, obviously we've got one of them here. She's lived here for quite a few years now, but recently sold to new owners. Um, they're really keen to do some big family cruising on it. Uh, so two people with a, with a young child and uh, they're, they're sort of ready to live the dream. So we're going to do some upgrades to the boat. We've got some a load of deck work to do and uh, a few changes up in this uh, this bow area. We're going to put a bigger locker in so they can put some uh, some of their toys, surfboards, and things like that. So when they're off long distance cruising, they can uh, they can carry some of their toys along with them and um, basically do the do the dream sail away. So uh, yeah, really looking forward to getting stuck into some work on this and and helping them uh, live their dream. So this is a lagoon. This one's a 380, that's a yeah, four ton. Do the cruisers. These are 20 years old. 20 years old. Um, Tallulah here, the four ton, she's had lithium upgrade by us oh, two years ago, three years ago, and a complete rewire. She's here every couple of years for winter maintenance, so we do engine work on her, we do sail drives, that kind of thing. Uh, the 380 is more of a long term storage, waiting for everything to kind of the world to sort itself out really okay. and try and get off work and do the long-term cruising that she's designed for. Richard Woods designed yeah. Banshee? Yes. Banshee Backlash. So this was Tony Purser's early catamaran before you had the Shoney. The second catamaran. More history, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh, so this boat was actually built just outside of Millbrook at Palamos, uh, as were pretty much all the Banshees, I think. But she has done two round Britons this, this boat. And she's done the Azab as well. And once that, uh, the new, new owners took her over and then they've gone more cruising. So she lives in the river in the Tamar, but she still goes out pretty much every time she's afloat, she is out, out and about. And am I correct, this, is this the boat you did your first round Britain on? No, I did it on Backlash 2. Ah, okay. Dreamcatcher, is this a monomoran, is it? <laughs> <laughs> how's, this, how's this in the multi health center? <laughs> so it's hot, hiding in a corner. <laughs> we allow it in because it doesn't fall over on its own. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, it's a catamaran keel. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, very sensible. <laughs> okay. What have we got up here? I believe this is another Palamos built boat. Oh, it's a flicker, it's isn't a, it? It's a flicker. It's a Woods Flicker 37. The owner's recently bought her in a bit of a state and he's planning to do it up himself. He's actually a naval architect, so he's got some experience and uh, he's going to do it up and uh, do some cruising and, uh, and adventures on it. Yeah. Yeah, he, that one should be here for a, for a little bit, but then uh, I expect it will be here for another, another summer and then it'll be off. Looks like quite a long term something or other going on next door as well. This one's aluminium. She is yeah. aluminium. I don't actually know what design she is. No, no, I have I. no idea. Mm -hmm. um, she's been here for what, 10 years now? It's one of those. The guy's got big aspirations. He knows what he wants to do with it, but he's, um, he's in a fairly high up role in his job, so he doesn't get anywhere near as much time to do like. things as he'd like. Um, he spends most of his time 
off around the world sorting out other people's boats so right. he doesn't really get time to uh, work on his own. The very sad story of being in the marine business, Daz. Yes. She came from France. And this one actually came on two lorries, bolted right down the middle. Yeah. And they actually had to cut the keels off to um, get her through underneath one of the bridges. I did my uh, VHF course with him oh. about 12 years ago right. when he bought it. And he asked me, oh, you can come sailing with me as soon as I've finished. Oh. Trout. This is Pete Trout. old boat. This one? This one. Ah. He owned this one for a few years. Right. Okay. And, uh, ocean winds, isn't it? Yep. Another. Okay. Day. Ocean winds. It's another woods. It's woods, woods here. Woods, gypsy, mm -hmm. this one. And, uh, another ocean wind. Another ocean. 43. 43. Richard 43. She was bought in France by her current owner, and then she came here. They managed to get it cheap with a few issues, and she came here, and we did a load of work to her to get her working. And again, he's um, pretty high up in his job, so he never has any time to actually use the boat at the moment, sadly. So hopefully, again, with everything clearing up, hopefully next year, we'll see her back on the water. Good. So is he planning to race or? Um, he seems keen to do anything. It's just whether he actually has the time to do it. Mm. So I think we might be able, if he can get on the boat, I think we might see her on the race course once or twice. Excellent. <laughs>